show people. Yes, the bad penny is back yet again. What are you going to do? You just can't ever really get rid of me. I want to discuss something, though, that pretty much has absolutely nothing to do with makeup. And even though I'm working on an afghan that I'm making for Christmas, it has nothing to do with my DIY stuff. It is kind of DIY because you need to do it yourself. But if you're a storyteller, it has to do with writing. For those of you who don't know, I'm a writer. I've been a writer for a while. I've been published in some very minor things. And I'm currently in college because I figured some of the stuff in a college course for creative writing, which is a BA in English, since I never got to go to college before, would be a good way to polish up some of my writing skills, learn a few more, and get more information about publishing. Some of my instructors are working writers. Some of my instructors have worked in publishing. Some have done both. Not so much on the general academics, because you do have to do your general academics if you want your BA. But one of the things I want to talk about, because I'm getting to a point now where I'm going to have to start really thinking about whether or not I'm going to take my manuscripts and cast them out into the sea of publishers and see if any of them gets caught. Or I'm going to have to rally myself together, do all of the editing and layout and find an artist and all this other stuff, because you have to have an artist for your cover work. You really do. You don't want generics. But to do self-publishing, especially through something like Kindle Books. Now, I've been looking at some of the newer authors who are selling their books for like 99 cents, $2.99, $3.99, to see if they can start drawing an audience that are doing it through Amazon for Kindle. And yeah, those books can actually be ordered as hard copy, but it takes a while because they're being printed up as they're ordered. Most of it stays on ebook. My problem with some of these newer authors is they are counting too much, way too much, on autocorrect and Grammarly and some of the other editing programs to do all of the work. And that's where you end up with things like they were obviously in the script trying to indicate descendants and they kept writing ancestors. But they kept talking about how you know, this was people in a family line that are the current family line and that the original family line started way back when. But since things like Grammarly and Spellcheck look at ancestors and go, perfectly good word, Grammarly might catch it, might, because of context. But Grammarly is more interested in doing things like cutting down really chunky, clunky sentences. So if you've got ancestors where descendants ought to be, it's not going to be fixed. And some of the other things that drive me absolutely spare, and I do mean right round the end, 
is people who have decided they want to write a romance book and they want to be a little more explicit. They don't want to do the fade to black. They want to do the rest of the scene. You would not believe the collection of euphemisms for anatomical parts that I have read. And I do mean euphemisms. They will come up with a word out of nowhere in some cases to describe an anatomical part that is in the, the position of being used for whatever this, this particular physical encounter is. And they will drive you crazy with euphemisms until you start getting ready to like just throw your Kindle across the room because you cannot take one more rep repetition of throbbing manhood or clasping womanhood. Let me tell you, that crap gets old really quick. The other things that will drive me absolutely crazy, and see, I'm, I'm worried about these things. I'm worried about these things because I don't want to fall into those traps. I don't want to be another one of the self-publishing persons who can't quite get the words right. Now, yeah, I'm a bit of a perv. So yeah, there will be sex scenes in my books. But I am praying that I can manage to not sound like a total idiot or somebody that's like a freshman in high school but still hasn't quite figured out what it is that we are trying to talk about without being quite so abrasive that some of the milder tempered people who don't mind a little heat are not going to run screaming from the frank discussions or we won't have somebody who's looking for some decent writing to run flying away from throbbing purple whatevers. Gee, oh, Eddie. Grammar is something that just doesn't seem to get used much. You don't have to worry as much if you're doing dialogue because grammar for dialogue is speaking patterns and speaking patterns are very rarely grammatical. It's like you've got dialects to worry about and variant slang and where is your where are you set? You know, are you like trying to translate Cockney into grammatically correct sentences? Yeah, give that up. You know, are you trying to do rhyming language from Australia or from Britain and trying to, no, just let it lay, give it up, put it down the way it, it, it's supposed to be. Don't worry about your grammar because your grammar is not going to worry about you. However, the rest of it should be at least properly spelled and have all the words in the sentence. I'm currently reading a book series, and I'm reading it because it was $3.99 a book. And it's a brand new author. And there are large portions. It's a, I kind of like the story, which is why I'm, I'm keeping up with it. There's a couple of books in the series. I kind of like the basis of the story. But when you leave out chunks of words from sentences, you need to get yourself a proofreader. Because obviously your mind is reading what you meant to put down because your mind will do that. It will fill in what they, what it's what's supposed to be there. It will fill that in while you're reading it back. 
If you cannot see your errors any longer, you need a proofreader or what for some people they call a beta reader. Beta readers are more often friends who have a clue than they are, you know, a professional editor. So some professional editors are very expensive. And for the most part, those of us who do not have buckets of ducats and aren't famous yet, don't have an editor. We have beta readers. And self-publishing has a lot more beta readers than the usual setup with a actual publishing house. An actual publishing house usually has proofreaders and editors that will be working with your material and writing back and going, fix it. You know, they can fix little things like misspellings and, you know, transposed words without having to make you redo it. But if you're leaving out whole chunks of what, of text that should be there, yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of work with the rewrite do it too often, and they're not going to take your stuff anymore. But there's no reason that even somebody who is self-publishing should be quite that cracked up in what they're putting out. And it's really bothersome to think that, that I'm considering doing self-publish because at this point in time there are people who are self-publishing that are getting letters of interest from book readers for the big publishing houses where they're you know seeing the book online they're seeing the book seeing how many people have bought the book what kind of reviews have come in if any they can get a chunk of the story and look at it all without having to necessarily, you know, have to go through the usual process and then have to write the letter that says, nope, sorry, we're not interested, yada, yada. This way they can just do all of the prelim, and if they're interested in publishing your book, then they contact you. That's one of the big changes in how things are going with the print edition publishing. I mean, think about it. Everybody and their Uncle Fudd, if they've got a typewriter or a word processor, a computer of some make, model, or description, they can find a way, even if it's a typewriter, you can scan your stuff in at the local office supply and have it published. You know, do your own e-publish. If you've got a computer that will talk to the entire web, you can publish your e-publish, and somebody will sell it as long as it's been formatted to something that will speak to an e-reader. This is not rocket science. So yeah, you don't necessarily have to go through tons and tons of rejections and hoping that somebody at a publishing company wants your stuff. They're being inundated every day with thousands upon thousands of story ideas, inquiry letters. Even people who are authors who are published their offices get inundated with, here's my story. How do you think I should go about getting it published? So, you know, you're going, eh. If you're a writer and you want to try to get published, you have to start thinking about what method you want to take a shot at. Do I think I will probably apply to some of the, the publishing houses? 
probably. But more than likely, I'm going to be doing kind of a combo. Put some of the stuff online, put some of the stuff in an inquiry letter during the reading period at whatever publisher. And yet, that's another thing. A lot of times, you have to check a schedule to see if they are in their reading period or not. If they are not in their reading period, you're going to be throwing your stuff away to send it in. And no, they're not looking for you to send a bazillion page manuscript anymore. They want to see an e-product. In most cases, they want to see a story synopsis. They want to see your bio, you know, what you've done before, if you have any credentials, if you've done anything special, if you've won any kinds of awards. <clears throat> They're going to expect to get a reasonable and well-written letter of inquiry. So yeah, you best have your business reading on Q2. Business reading, business writing on par with anyone else in a business. You need to be able to write a fairly short and concise bio that you would expect to find on the back of your book. And normally what they're going to be looking for after that summary is they're going to be looking for the first chapter. That's it, just the first chapter. If the first chapter really catches them, they'll ask for more. If you're planning on doing a series with your book, before you send out the first one, best you have the second one almost done. Because if a publishing house does take you on, and they understand that this is supposed to be a series, they're going to want to know how quickly they can put the next book out. Because if you hit big and, you know, catch some press and start selling well, they're going to want to put the next book out pretty quick. You've kind of got the same thing with the e-publication. You need to have some manuscripts to work with that you can put out not, you know, one a week, but in a fairly regular time frame so that if you get readers who are interested, you're not leaving them hang too long before the next book in a series comes out. Kindly remember, we are working with the short attention span people. Especially if you're working, on, if you're doing ebooks, some of your readers have a really short attention span, and they're looking for the next book and the next book, and the, especially if you've left them a cliffhanger. If you're writing standalones, you have a chance to maybe not have them back to back to back, but if you're working series. They're going to want to consume the series as close together as possible without being completely just, you know, you don't want them to be color pop. I know, I said I wasn't going to talk about makeup, but color pop is releasing stuff in their line so fast you hardly have a chance to look at what they just released. You want to give them time to finish the first one and start to think about you, they really like the next one before you just lay it out there. Now, if you've been working on stuff for a while, yeah, they're going to be thrilled because you've got likely a couple, three books from your series, depending on how many are in the series, that are already out there and they can consume those pretty rapid. If they get hooked by the first book, they can pick the rest of them up in pretty rapid succession. 
But when you're first putting them out, you got to kind of gauge what you feel is a reasonable amount of time between books. And remember that part of that reasonable amount of time is to allow you to have one going out while you're finishing processing on the next one. You know, you finish the story, you're starting your rewrites, that kind of thing. Because you can't, you can't just throw it out there without doing revision and making sure you've got all your T's crossed and your I's dotted and your commas in the right place. All that. Sometimes you got to wonder, though. I think possibly part of the problem with some of the books that drive me crazy on missing large chunks of words and, you know, wrong word used. And there's some people that just don't know the language they're working with, even though they're technically native speakers, because they will do the there, there, there thing and mess it all up. Or they're reaching for a $25 word and they remember the $15 word that sounds a lot like it, but really, yeah, they're not related by any capacity. And they're in such a hurry to get the book published that they are not taking the time to get it cleaned up properly first, which I think is a little bit annoying as a reader, and I'm praying I don't do as a writer. Yes, I decided I needed to talk about some other stuff because, let's be real, right now, all of the YouTube is kind of in a transition phase. People are changing the way they're approaching their channels. They're changing the way they are approaching the content that they want to do. They're creating mixed content. And this is something that I'm relatively passionate about, which is writing. I'm almost finished with one of my first writing courses for this BA program that I'm working with an author as the professor who's someone I've actually read before. You want to talk about scary. I've read this guy's work. I know the franchises he writes for, and they're some of my favorites. So, yeah. And when he tells me I either did something right, or here's how to fix what I did wrong, let me tell you, I'm paying attention. It's like he tells me what I did wrong wrong and how I could do better, and I'm taking notes. This is some serious stuff here. I don't let the fact that he's found something wrong with what I did put me off. This man has been published for a while, and he and his wife write together. They've got awards. <laughs> they've got franchise contracts. They've got, they've got. And it's somebody that I can respect and get behind. And I would be an absolute fool if I let anything that he said that put my work into a quote-unquote negative light if I let that put me off completely, I'm a storyteller. I will tell the stories. A lot of the stuff I do is science fiction and fantasy. 
A lot of the stuff I do is, yes, actually rather pervy and kinky. Some of the stuff I do is based on being in a family. Some of the stuff I do is not. People die, people get born, people find their mate, people lose their mate. People are not always people. I had one of my classmates do a critique on my little short sci-fi piece that I had to do for this class. Now, I've been doing sci-fi for a long time. And we had a little discussion about the word Terran. One of the first things she says to me is, what's a Terran? And I'm like, you don't do sci-fi much, do you, sweetheart? And the point was, that's neither here nor there. If somebody is encountering fantasy or sci-fi for the first time and has never heard that term or read that term, you need to explain it to them. They're not necessarily going to intuit that a Terran is an Earthlinger with a classier name. You know, if you got somebody who's never, ever dealt with fantasy and you hand them J.R.R. Tolkien and say, here, this is a story about hobbits. They're going to look at you funny. What the hell's a hobbit? So I had to think about that. I had to think about how I want to write intimate relations between characters so that we don't get things like the throbbing purple numbers and pulsating whatevers and we don't get too many crashing waves for an orgasm or falling off the mountain that's you know they hit the peak fell off the mountain la 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 but something that is not necessarily so coarse that the descriptions are going to stick you in the crappy porn category and scare off some of your younger readers or even some of your older readers who are a more delicate temperament. But let me tell you, you know after that fiasco with the Fifty Shades of Grey where she didn't know what the hell she was talking about? I actually know what I'm talking about. You know, safe, sane, consensual. Which was not what was in Fifty Shades of What the Hell Ever. That has turned into 50 more shades of What the Hell Ever. She's rewritten the same book three or four times now from different people's perspective. And I'm like, this is a one-trick pony, and the pony is dead. Put it away. Kind of like that crazy woman that decided we needed to have vampires that sparkle. Vampires don't sparkle in sunlight. They go, Phew! burn up and disappear. In a bash. Sparkling vampires. Yes, I have some very determined opinions about some stuff. In case you haven't figured out. Anyway, I've been clapping my gums long enough. I've basically done two fairly long vids back to back. No, really, that's why I have on the same clothes and the same makeup. Oh, my nose is starting to run, which is really annoying. And my throat is getting sore and tired. 
So let me know. Do you think this is a interesting topic to occasionally drop in? Would you be interested in me continuing to do stuff about writing and storytelling? Would any of you get interested if I got like a Patreon page and read some of my stories over the online? Yes, if I'm going to read it, you're paying for it. Because otherwise, I'm giving away my hard work. Now, let me tell you, if you actually are a writer and you decide to get up in the up and go publish your book, do not. Just don't do it. Do not go to an artist and ask them to do your cover work for free for the exposure for their portfolio. Don't do it. Just don't. It is not only a trashy move, but let me remind you, you're trying to sell your book to make money. They're trying to sell their art to make money. You want to be able to do things with your money. They want to be able to do things with their money. They have school bills and materials and rent and utility bills and car payments and all of this other stuff, just like the rest of us. Believe me, they've already created portfolios for themselves. They don't need to be freebooting your cover art and you don't need to be insulting an artist with that kind of an offer. It's just, you know, if it's a buddy of yours and they are willing to do it for, you know, the freebie thing and they're all good with it, go for it. Go for it. But don't ask them. If they volunteer, speak to them politely and manage to slip them something anyhow. But speak to them very politely. But slip them a little something anyway. Because, like I said, they are trying just as hard as you are, a writer, to make a living. If they went to art school, they're still paying those student loans. If you want it on a piece of paper, they have to buy that piece of paper. You want it in computer graphics. Let me tell you about how inexpensive computer graphics are not. The programs are huge expenses. So don't wander up to some poor artist and think they're starving enough to want to do your cover art for the off chance that it might get seen by some miracle, by some benefactor who is going to just come running in and save them. It just, no, don't do it. Don't make a fool of yourself. Don't make an enemy. Don't run up to other artists and authors at writers' conventions and try to hand them your book. Do it the right way. Do your intro letter. Do your inquiry letter. Submit it under the guidelines. Because If you go look up a publishing house, they have a whole section on their website that will tell you what the requirements are for submission. Best you follow. Anyway, I'm going to get off of here and maybe go get a snack because it's almost time to watch the news. And the news has been interesting of late. Let's see how things go. Anyway, be good. Thank you.